Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to uh, carry on. Uh, apologies to those who just heard me and talk about uh, Martello. So, trying to understand who Martello is, the first thing I'll ask you to do is look at the problems on the right hand side of these, sorry, left hand side of the slides. Most of you should recognize that as a problem that most enterprises suffer. And the answer to what does Martello do is we solve those problems and they're not going away. And even that panel I was just on, the reason I was on the panel is those are going to get worse. The more data, the more network complexity you have, the bigger those problems are going to become. So being able to solve those problems is a never going away business. And certainly that's where Metallo sees the growth. And we already do this for 5,000 customers. We're in 150 plus countries already. So it is a growing industry that we believe in. So we have three key product lines, and they actually overlap and they connect. We do performance management software, so helping a CIO understand their environment, understand what's going on. We want to then see can they visualize it? Can they bring their teams together, visualize the problems with analytics, understand what's going on better, and then solve it? And part of that we do is with our SD-WAN solutions, software-defined networking, to actually solve the complexity of the network uh, for a range of our clients. So strengths. Oh, we joke a bit about Martello being a nine-year overnight success. Uh, we went public four months ago. And it took us time to get there. We've developed a solid business model, solid uh, revenue models that, again, we'll be putting up shortly. And again, having 5,000 customers around the world telling you what the problems are is key. We're not speculative. We didn't come into this saying, let's create a solution to see there's a market for it. We already have customers asking for our solution and saying, what else can we do? And that's key. We have steady revenue growth, and I'll show you the numbers shortly. And then we're going to grow through acquisitions, and we did two of those last year, as well as a private placement and went public. So when I talk about the team being strong, not many companies in one year will do a private placement, two acquisitions, and go public. And in fact, we had one of our, our big auditing companies say at the beginning of the year, that's not really the plan, is it? Because you can't do that. And our response was, watch us, we can, and we did. And again, you've just heard on this panel the growing addressable IoT market. And I cannot reinforce that enough. This is not a fad. We're not making something up. You just had a whole panel tell you what the market is that we're addressing uh, and why we are in business and the problems that we solve. And you don't get a much better logo client than this one. It's not really going anywhere soon. It's fairly well funded, and it uses our technology because they need to connect, and they're in places where the network isn't good. So Martello solves the problem. And I want to reinforce that, keep you know, reinforcing that message, is we step through this solving the problems that exist. And as you heard from the IT panel, the ones are going to get worse. So here's the numbers. A lot of you like numbers. Some of them are really, really, you know, again, key. 80% gross margin on 80% recurring revenue. And it's all gone quiet, right? 20% organic growth because we're solving problems all the time. And again, you know, we've just gone public and we do expected adjusted EBITDA uh, in the first half of FY20. So I said we have a build and buy strategy. So we have an acquisition strategy. The reason is, is technology is moving so fast that we can't necessarily build the solution in time. So we're going to acquire it. And again, that was why we went public, to create liquidity, to create the space where we could do an acquisition strategy. And buying into that technology base, buying those, buying those technology companies that fit in solving that problem that we identified at the front end. The other thing we're seeing now is cross-sell. Uh, recently, our most recent acquisition was a company called Savision, headquartered in the Netherlands with the R&D here in Canada. So we've merged the R&D teams, but now we have a whole sales team based in Europe overnight. And we're only three months into seeing the cross-sell taking effect, and it's significantly going. We won our first very large client in Russia uh, only last week. 
And again, through an acquisition, through having a sales team and cross-selling, those things make a difference. Because it's really nice to have good tech, but you've got to be able to take it to market. You've got to be able to position that, right, so people understand what they're buying and why they're buying it and close that deal. So what are our acquisition targets looking like? Must be accretive. So proven technology cross-sell channel. Now my background is also big systems integrator uh, before I stepped into the, the role I'm in now as CEO of Martello. And that cultural FET is really, really key. The people side of acquisition. It's one of those things you know, people probably don't focus on enough, but most acquisitions fail through that. We actually do a cultural survey Right? We surveyed our company so we know who we are, we know how we make decisions, we know how our company functions. Before we do any acquisitions, we extend that survey to the, the target company. So we understand them. How do they function? How do they connect? How do they make decisions? What is their culture like? If it's too different, we're not going because it won't work. It will fall apart. If they're close enough, we get highlights of areas we're going to need to focus on, areas leadership need to pay attention to to make this work, and that's key. And our churn rate has actually dropped. Even with two acquisition last year, our churn rate has gone down because we do this well. And I think that's key. And again, we're not buying companies that are broken. We're not coming to fix companies, that's not us. We're looking for those companies that are stable financial. An example I give is, we've now got companies coming to us. After we went public, you get a higher profile. We have companies coming to us saying, we think we'd be a good fit. And some of them have been around five or six years, 15 to 20 people doing two to three million a year, and they can't break through that ceiling. But the amount of sweat equity those guys have put into their company, you bring them in and you make sure they live, you make sure their child that they've invested in, their heart and their soul into for the last five, six, nine years, you make sure that they know that's got a vision, it can keep going. And then it's a much better discussion and people believe in what you're doing. So customers and partners, I mentioned 5,000 plus. If you stayed in a Marriott hotel, you've used our technology nine times out of 10. If you stayed in any hotel in Dubai, you've used our technology, even the big shard looking one, uh, we're there. The same thing, Hilton, VW, KPMG. All people who recognize this complexity of the environment and they need to be able to solve it. Um, Mitel, Mitel's key because that's where Martello came from. That was our roots. Martello was created by a gentleman called Sir Terence Matthews. Some of you may have heard of him. Um, we were spun out of Mitel to solve a problem Mitel had. We're still there. We announced only recently our growing relationship with Mitel as they become more UC, more cloud-based. They need us more. So they've just signed a new deal with us, a new relationship, good pricing for us. We're very pleased with it, but also extends the contract terms. And the other thing with phone systems, they're sticky. How quickly do you guys change laptops? Two years, every three years, maybe, right? One day it's a Lenovo, then it's a Dell, then it's something else, HP. How often do you change phone systems? 10 years, 15 years? This is sticky business, right? I mentioned you know, 27 to 30% monthly recurring you know, organic growth, right? Because phone systems are sticky. Once you're in there and you've got monthly recurring revenue on a phone system, it's not going anywhere for a while. And as I said, we're a Mitel Gold preferred partner. We're actually the only analytics and data provider into the Mitel environment. The other nice thing is some recognition for what we're doing. So Frost and Sullivan cited us as a market leader for performance advice in SD-WAN. And I'll be very clear, we didn't pay for this. This was a surprise to us too. Um, so this wasn't a sort of pay, you know, pay to play. Uh, this came out of the blue. And they recognized what we were doing in SD-WAN was slightly different. SD-WAN is busy, there's a lot of competition out there, and we really look to the value of what we're doing and our ability to close um, targets where they're very price conscious but technically savvy is key for us. Those are our target markets where you know, they don't have a massive IT budget and willing to spend an awful lot of money, but they, do get, they know what they want and they're willing to spend the money to get it. So it gives you an idea of outstanding shares, Current market cap, although the stock has done quite well over the last couple of days, um, working capital. And insider ownership, 22% of that is Wesley Clover, uh, is that Wesley Clover environment, so Terry Matthews uh, and his Wesley Clover environment, which gives us an enormous network to go and play with globally.
leadership team, and you'll see Sir Terry Matthews up there, and then Bruce Linton, who's here tomorrow. He was the CEO before me, so I took over from Bruce because Canopy got kind of busy. Uh, so he stepped, you know, he's uh, recruited, he and Terry recruited me to take in. And then you see the rest of the team. A lot of experience. This is not a bunch of newbies. They're coming in as the junior guys. And this is my last one because my red light is flashing and I'm heading out of here. Uh, if you have any follow-on questions, our booth is just across the corner here. Be delighted to take further questions or any other uh, comments and talk to you later on. Thank you very much for your time.